Number three, not only we look back and we look forward, number three, we look around. What the Bible says here, which is many times is misinterpreted, is it says that many people take communion in unworthy manner. Now I want you to notice it does not say people who take communion are unworthy people. Many times, every time I came to a communion when I was a younger boy and this verse was read, it was always read like this. If you are unworthy and you have done something unworthy, you know, that means you shouldn't take the communion. It doesn't say that. It says here, if you take communion in unworthy manner, it doesn't say if you are the unworthy person. Listen to this. Listen to this. It's going to set you free. What is the unworthy manner? You always want the Bible to explain the Bible, not some tradition. The way to always have the Bible explain the Bible is this is the rule. Take 10 verses above the verse you're not understanding and those 10 verses or 20 verses will explain the verse you're not understanding. For example, many people have confusion about what is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and they try to say blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when a negative thought comes into your mind about the Holy Spirit. Every time blasphemy of the Holy Spirit was mentioned, it was in reference to Pharisees crediting miracles of Jesus to the devil and Jesus responding saying you blasphemy the Holy Spirit. So in the context blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is not what you say about the Holy Spirit, it's crediting miracles to the devil. That's simple because when your Bible explains the Bible and so in here we see 1st Corinthians chapter 11 it says this and I'm going to read verse 17 and I want you to listen very carefully this is the part that I know we skip a lot because Paul deals with the issues in Corinth church but this is where the issue of the unworthy manner came from in the following directives I have no praise for you for your meetings do more harm than good Corinthians we're not the only ones that struggle with meetings they had meetings and Paul says your meetings do more harm than good and this is why. He says in the first place I hear that you come together as a church and there are divisions among you. To some extent I believe it. No doubt that there have been differences that you show that you show that you have God's approval. So then when you come together it is not is it not the Lord's supper that you eat for when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, a person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in or you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Now communion in the old days were not done like this. People actually, you know like when you have a get together and everyone brings something to the table. That's exactly how communion were done. Everyone brought something to the table. The problem is the poor Christians had nothing to bring because they were very poor. So what happened is the rich Christians constantly every time they met together they bring all the food and the poor Christians would eat all the food and that was the communion. So what the rich Christians discovered to do is they would bring the food early, eat it, so when the communion kicks in there's no communion elements and the poor people don't have anything to eat even during communion because they didn't bring anything because they don't have anything and the rich people felt like well finally we ate our own food and Paul is saying he said you're humiliating people who have nothing and he says you're not thinking about others he says you are eating communion in unworthy manner so eating communion in unworthy manner deals with this how is your relationship to your fellow Christians? Because we don't have a problem with bringing food today. But are you mistreating? Are you humiliating? Is your heart judge you concerning how you relate to people who are in your faith? If that is the case, remember this is the body of Christ. But this is representation of the body of Christ. The real body of Christ is the person sitting next to you. You can't be saying, I celebrate this, but I tolerate you. Mm -hmm. I love this, but I hate you. I can't stand you. Paul is saying, you are taking this in unworthy manner. Actually, I'm going to shock you. The first communion that happened, that Jesus initiated, someone got demon possessed. When Judas took the cup and the bread, the Bible says Satan entered him during communion. 
Why? Because Judas publicly was saying this inwardly he was a killer. He hated Jesus. He had this thing where he loved money and because of that during communion instead of receiving healing like the Bible says in here the Bible says some of you through unworthy manner get sick and weak. Why? Because what you do toward other believers opens the door to the power of the enemy or to the power of Christ. God doesn't expect us to be perfect but we have to understand communion isn't just about well I love Jesus and I hate you. Jesus says that's not how it works. You can't go in love my head and hate my body. Body and head is together and you have to understand this is a conviction for me and this is a conviction for you that you and I as a Christian have to watch our heart and look around how am I treating my fellow brothers and sisters. 